The title of this video is Stop Finding Importance in Your Trauma, which is a bold statement. Therefore, I'm going to explore what I mean by finding importance in your trauma and why some people not only find a deep sense of value in their trauma, but cling to it. Lastly, why can this be so damaging? And what do I suggest that might be better? First off, if this is your first time here, welcome. This is my channel Eastbound, and for those that don't know, the reason I chose the name Eastbound is because I'm on a journey, or bound, for a different and better me, which is East, East being my last name. I have a whole video about it here, but today's video is exploring the way I feel like some of us find not only importance, but a deep sense of meaning or purpose in their lives through their trauma and how that holds us back on our own journeys to become better. Before I get into the bulk of this video, I want to establish a base of why feeling important or a sense of importance is so primary in our lives. And I'm going to do this actually through an excerpt in a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's interesting because in this book, <laughs> Almost none of it has anything to do with trauma or finding importance in trauma. It's all, as the title suggests, how to win friends and influence people. But in this chapter titled, How to Make People Feel Important, Dale Carnegie talks about one of the quickest way to make friends is to make people feel important. And you do this by remembering their names, asking about their lives and such. And then he talks about one of the quickest ways to make enemies is to strip people of their importance. And it's interesting because it was in this chapter about how to make people feel important that I read this excerpt. It's one of those moments in reading where it just ha shines light on this thing in your life that you even know you were looking for light to be shown on. And because of that, I wanna read the excerpt that is really influential in this whole idea of finding importance in our trauma. In How to Win Friends and Influence People on page 37, Dale Carnegie writes, almost all these wants, food, shelter, etc., are usually gratified, all except one. But there is one longing, almost as deep, almost as imperious as the desire for food or sleep, which is seldom gratified. It is what Freud calls the desire to be great. It is what Dewey calls the desire to be important. The desire for a feeling of importance is the one of the chief distinguishing differences between mankind and animals. Why do people go insane? I put that question to the head physician of one of the most important psychiatric hospitals. This doctor, who has received the highest honors and the most coveted awards for his knowledge of the subject, told me frankly that he didn't know why people went insane. Nobody knows for sure, but he did say that people who go insane find in that insanity a feeling of importance that they were unable to achieve in the world of reality. I quote this section of the book because Dale Carnegie suggests that some people are so hungry for a feeling of importance that they actually resort to extreme measures like insanity to find it. Like I said, when I was reading this, it was one of those moments that literally shook me to my core. This was an epiphany of why I was holding on so tightly to my trauma. For many of us, myself included, Often the most traumatic and life-changing moments also tragically become the source for that sense of importance. Especially those of us misfortunate enough to have trauma visited to us in our childhood or young adulthood. For this age, we have not yet had a chance to have any other source of great accomplishment in our still developing states. Besides for the select and rare prodigies in this world, the rest of us rightly have not contributed anything meaningful or important to our lives, let alone others. When children, teens, or young adults look plainly at the summation of their lives thus far, who is to blame them that they choose to lend importance and identity around the one and only massive event or events in their past? Especially if that event is filled with pain, loss, or the shattering of innocence. When my father died when I was 16, my identity and sense of importance was born from this moment. I remember thinking as I walked the halls of my high school, I'm the kid with the dead dad. An identity formed from the sheer inability for nearly all of my peers to relate. And from this identity, I crafted a strange and comforting sense of importance from this differentiating fact. I lost my father as too did my four siblings. I had experienced something few others had at that age, and that was important. That made me different. 
It's hard not to, for when you encounter truly life-changing trauma, the kind of trauma that debarks a permanent shift in your trajectory through life, that is indeed an important moment. More so important is the journey into the underworld we all must undertake to overcome that trauma. In my experience, there are broadly speaking three kinds of people when it comes to having been traumatized. One, those who have overcome it and use their trauma as their source for bettering themselves. Two, those who are still hopelessly stuck in their journey, often struggling with all manner of issues like depression, promiscuity, drug use, overachieving, self-sabotaging, etc. Three, those who have failed in their journey and have become twisted, bitter, and resentful. All three of these draw a sense of importance from their trauma in different ways. For those that succeed and become better for it, the importance lies in the pride they have for having faced something awful and overcoming it. For those still stuck, the importance is found in how all-consuming this pursuit is. They have some level of acknowledgement of what's at stake and that the quality of the rest of the lives hangs in the balance. Lastly, for those unlucky enough to let trauma twist them into ugly and lesser versions of themselves, the importance of trauma lies in their reliance on using it as an excuse to justify why they had no choice or agency in their becoming but a dark shadow of themselves. Intriguingly enough, it is actually possible to belong to more than one category. People are complicated and multifaceted, a blending of various versions of themselves that all come to the surface at different situation and stimuli. It is entirely possible, and honestly, most likely, that there are very ingrained parts of you that exist in the different stages of these three basic types. You are merely defined by how much of the all-encompassing you falls into which of these categories. Over the last few years, I have shifted from one or the other, at times being a part of all three. My whole channel is about how I'm trying to help others break free of type three and successfully navigate through type two to one day hopefully primarily be a part of type one. For those of us that have been like truly traumatized or gone through truly traumatic events, these events become deep parts of our identities. When we tell stories about ourselves or we try to describe ourselves to others, these stories of trauma become intimate parts of our identity because it is so incredibly hard to separate who we are from what we have experienced. I discussed this at length in my last video of are you including death in your self-portrait? There I talk about how metaphorically painting in your trauma or hardship into the narrative of who you are is so incredibly damaging because it limits your potential for your future and causes you and your hardship to become one and the same. Where this video instead is more about why we find a sense of importance, meaning, or purpose in our trauma or hardship and why that's damaging and limiting. But so why is it so hard to stop finding importance in our past hardship or trauma? Well, because the inclusion of it greatly shapes the way we or others view our current circumstances. For instance, let's take a look at my current body. And I promise this has a point. Like this isn't like some humble brag. There is a very real point to its inclusion in a video about trauma. Just please, for the love of God, bear with me. I promise there's a point. Here's what I currently look like, which is subjectively a fit and lean body. It's not the best body in the world, but clearly something I've put time and effort into. But what if I told you I used to look like this, that I used to be 100 pounds heavier? But what if I also told you that the reason I had gained 100 pounds was because I used binge eating to cope with the death of my father? Then what if I also told you that in the process of desperately trying to lose weight, I survived a lethal overdose of an illegal fat burner? Now, all this negative context of what my body used to look like and why I gained weight all of a sudden and how I almost died desperately trying to lose that weight to some people, may make my current body all that much more impressive. Because my current body represents me overcoming the weight I gained because of the death of my father, and also successfully overcoming extremely dangerous methods of losing weight. By finding importance in my negative past and unhealthy body, I elevate to some degree what I've managed to accomplish today. But there's a cost with leveraging that past. Because I so strongly leaned on how I used to be overweight, it's been extremely hard to move on from the mindset of someone who is overweight. I have been some level of fit for the last six years, but I still find myself constantly stuck in this mindset of someone who isn't, which greatly affects things like my confidence. 
A big part of this is because I still view my current body through the lens of the body I had before. For every bit the inclusion in my past body makes my current body more impressive, it equally taints that image. It keeps me in the past. Ironically, due to pride and not wanting to cut away this sense of accomplishment of overcoming my past body, I tragically chained myself to the burden of struggling with not having the mindset of someone who is overweight. Another really embarrassing example of why I find importance in my trauma is that I use it as an excuse for why my life is so shit. If I told you at 27, after eight years of being in and out of several different schools, I barely graduated college with a computer science degree from a state university, and I have no current job prospects, and I moved back to a property my family owns in my hometown, and I'm in a serious amount of debt and I have no clue what I'm doing with my life, that paints a pretty pathetic picture, doesn't it? And don't get me wrong, it is indeed pathetic. That's why I have a whole series of videos on my channel called Operation Unfuck My Life. But would your opinion change if I told you that in those same eight years I survived a fatal overdose and completely turned my life around to only end up in a traumatic three-year relationship where I was engaged to someone who suffered from life-threatening anorexia and was suicidal, and that the hardship of that relationship pushed me into a suffocating depression where I eventually would seriously struggle with my own suicidal urges and that the last two years of my life have been about overcoming that trauma and my depression maybe that won't change your opinion but for me i use the trauma and the hardship of the last five years as a justification for the current abysmal state of my life yes my situation is pathetic but the importance i find in my trauma is that at least it makes me feel ever so slightly less pathetic I cling to the excuse of my life has been pretty fucked. But once again, there's a cost. For every bit that finding importance in this narrative of hardship helps alleviate guilt about my current circumstance, it, it also deeply binds me to my current flawed state. This repetitive retelling of my narrative as someone who hasn't succeeded because of the trauma he's experienced makes it that much harder to shift past this identity. I'm struggling in the now because I've come to rely so heavily on using being depressed and traumatized as an excuse for past failing. I deeply believe that for me to find success, I have to abandon this narrative and self-conceptualization, but I've been unwilling because I then have to abandon using it as an excuse, which means I also have to take full accountability with no asterisks or caveats for the abject disarray my life currently sits in. In both of these examples, we see that holding onto importance found in trauma, whether to elevate our success or to excuse our failures comes with a cost. But here's the most striking thing for me personally, is that if you were to take away all the hardship in my life, the death of my father, my toxic relationships, gaining and losing 100 pounds, nearly dying from an overdose of an illegal fat burner, my traumatic engagement, and my struggle with depression and suicide, what would I have left? Nothing. Like I said, I barely graduated college. I'm in debt. I have no stunning accomplishments to my name like some of my siblings. I have achieved nothing. My life has had no meaning, no purpose, no importance. And I don't say that to be melodramatic. It's just the truth. And that's the one thing I'll never shy away from on my channel is the truth. No matter what light that might paint me in, no matter how pathetic you think I am, and there's truth to that, no matter how bad or self-destructive these situations are created for myself, that's the truth of the matter. Without my trauma, I am nothing. Thus we find the most powerful reason some of us find importance in our trauma. It gives our life meaning or purpose. It allows us to embellish a potentially mediocre life into some grand odyssey where we paint ourselves as the hero facing down the monsters life has thrown into our path. 
but it can just as equally also be the purpose that drives us to relentlessly chasing after more. I've recently spent a great deal of time with someone who is what I would call an overachiever. By that I mean no matter what prestigious grad school they get into, no matter how good their grades are, or how much money they've saved, or any other laudable accomplishments, especially for their young age, None of that strips away or lessens the pain of their trauma. Their current relationship with trauma means no accomplishment will ever be good enough. Some of these individuals find importance in their trauma as the fire by which they fuel their drive to succeed in life. Although this is preferable to say letting your life fall apart as I have, it still has the same effect where all the great things this person achieves will be marred by the fact they only did it as a response to their trauma, which strips it of all its value to them. Many of these people fear letting go of their trauma as it also means letting go of the primary thing they've used to motivate themselves for sometimes years on end. The very antithesis to how a part of the reason I won't let go of my trauma is that it means I strip away one of the core reasons I've rationalized being so unmotivated for years on end now. With all that said, perhaps the most emotional and twisted example of how I've found meaning in trauma is a period of my life where I found myself strangely yet deeply missing my ex fiance's eating disorder, which is actually the next video I have planned. So if you're at all interested in how in the world I came to long for something as horrific as an eating disorder and how her eating disorder gave me a sense of purpose, please consider subscribing to my channel to catch that video when it comes out. Or if you want more of this kind of deep dives into personal psychology, this topic is a separate video because I really want to flesh out that story and this video is already going to be pretty long. But back to my point, are you clinging to your trauma because it gives your life purpose, or meaning, or because without it, you may look at your life and find it rather lacking. I've met people who have made their whole lives about their trauma, and who am I to judge them? Who am I to tell them they are wrong? But I want to impart a word of warning. Some of the most evil things I have seen a human being emotionally do to another human being was because of their reliance on trauma as a means of importance in their lives. As I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, some people are so hungry for a feeling of importance they actually go insane to get it. When faced with a lack of any other meaningful thing to achieve a feeling of I am important, we will go to desperate and insane measures to cling to anything that might give us that feeling. But in this kind of insanity, people are capable of unspeakable things yet fundamentally incapable of ever acknowledging fault. For the excuse of trauma has been so foundationally ingrained that person has forfeited all agency, all accountability to their hardship. I have seen mothers disowned, love shattered, innocence tarnished, and people slip into dark holes of drug use all because their dependency on trauma as an excuse made growth as a person impossible. For they had become indistinguishable from their trauma, shedding what could have made them a good person. So what's my point? I'm not asking you to never tell the stories of your hardship again or to forever cast them from your mind. I'm not asking you to abandon your personal journey through the underworld to overcome your trauma. What I'm asking is for you to stop finding importance in your trauma. Much like how I asked you to stop painting in death in your self-portrait in my last video. Don't find meaning or purpose in it. Don't use it to elevate your successes or to justify your failures, no matter how true. Abandon the feelings of pride or the comforts of excuses. In the beginning of this video, I said there were three basic types of people who have been traumatized. What if I told you there was actually a fourth type, the rarest of all? In my opinion, type four are those who have been traumatized yet have managed to so detach themselves from their trauma, they no longer include it in their own narrative. Type four find importance in their accomplishments completely free from any notion of hardship. Thus, I'm asking you to join me in striving to become type four. Tell the stories of your hardships as separate and independent stories, not as embellishments in conjunction with some other successful or broken aspect of your life. In my opinion, it limits you. It makes the past an intimate part of the present and worse yet, gives it a role in the future. This is especially true for the individuals whose whole lives have unquestionably been altered by their traumatic events. There are some forms of trauma that due to their nature will be permanent fixtures in a person's life. 
such as trauma that happens at the hands of family members. I by no means wish to minimize just how unspeakably hard that would be to cope with, but I still think forging an identity or gaining importance from that fact isn't the best for you in the grand scheme of your life. Obviously, I'd be remiss if I didn't put some kind of disclaimer that I've only experienced a limited number of the wealth of traumas a person can endure. There are people out there that will view this video that have gone through far more than I have. So my advice may not suit those with the most extreme or unique of situations. With that said, it's not gonna be easy. Much like how much it's gonna suck for me to stop relying on the excuse of my trauma for my shitty life and merely take accountability for it. Another aspect of trauma that makes it really hard to move on from is the way trauma can become ingrained in our physiological responses that are very much out of our control in the form of PTSD. Working to unlearn those reactions scarred into the automated systems of our emotions is an entirely different topic meant for a different video. But even with that said, in the least pretentious way, this pursuit of leaving behind whatever form of importance you may gain from your past pain is one I think would give your life meaning, the kind of meaning with a capital M. So that draws a close to today's very weighty video. I hope it made sense. If you got value from this video, it would mean a lot to me if you hit the like button or even considered sharing it. Also for those courageous and vulnerable enough, I'd love to see a comment about one of the ways you've perhaps found meaning in your traumatic past. As always, I wanna say thank you for your time and giving my content a chance. It legitimately means the world to me to have this platform to share my ideas and my thoughts with people and get feedback on it. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.